Hi, we're back and we're going to look at a new fitting today. This one is another uh, parallel line fitting and it's a T on a taper. So what we have is a cylindrical T sitting on a cone, basically is what we have. Now, uh, it's pretty similar to um, the parallel line T development we did in level one. Uh, and the, the premise is always the same. The, the, the process is, is very similar. The difference here is, is how we develop the view of the miter line here. And that's the key with, with all of our uh, T development, is being able to see this line in here, which we don't have. That shows us how the T itself interacts with the object it's sitting on. So be it uh, from level one, or previously we did uh, just on a piece of pipe. So two cylindrical objects meeting each other and we had to develop that miter line there, be it whatever shape or, or size the T was. And the same is here, but there's a little bit more to it. There's a few techniques in there that we have to do because of, because of the changing shape throughout this cone. And it also will depend on where it lands because that diameter is changing the whole way through the cone. So if it landed on center, which ours does, four inches out of the eight, or if it was up tall or lower, that's going to change the way it, the way it looks. Okay, so uh, step one is to get our elevation view drawn from our sketch here, or shop drawing. So let's get started on that full elevation view. Okay, there's our elevation view. Uh, we've got the cone here. Now we're not we're not worried about developing the cone in this sense. All we're worried about is the T here. Okay, so we need the cone to see how it fits, how they work together, but we're not going to actually make the pattern of this cone, and that's not the uh, the exercise in hand here. Okay, so let's put let's put some profiles on there, um, and what we're going we're going to profile the T. Okay, so I've got my, pro, my elevation view drawn, I did the profile, my divisions, and then created my element lines and brought them into the uh, right side of the cone here. That's where I know my miter line is going to show up here, so uh, that's where I want that. Now the next part is, is where it's a little bit different. One thing of when we're doing T development is we always have to compare the profile of the T or the size of the T to the profile of the pipe. And we did that, we did that with all of our T's uh, previously. So that's where things are going to change a little bit. We have to see how this interacts with this shape here, but we have different shapes depending on where it is. Okay? So our first step on that one is going to be to, to find out what the shape is where the T actually hits. Okay, so we're going to take we're going to take right where the T hits at the top and bottom, and I'm going to bring that radius in okay, on, on both sides here, like that. I'm going to pick that up and swing that arc. And now that tells me that this is the radius at both ends, at the top and bottom. This is the radius of the cone in that particular spot. So let's let's take that and swing that up 90. And let's take this one and swing that downwards. So those are different. Okay, you've got to reset to each side. So now we, had, um, now we have the size of the pipe, or the cone in this case, and now we have to do a comparison of this profile of how that hits it, and, and where that hits it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a 90 degree corner because I want to move this, this quadrant here upwards and sit it right here so that I can see how it hits this shape. So I'm going to, I'm going to create a little 90 here. Okay, 
and save at the bottom. Okay, get those two 90s. I'm going to go back and pick up. I'm going to go back and pick up this radius here now, and I'm going to move. I'm going to move that quarter profile or half profile, that quadrant up into this corner here. So I take this this radius. That's the radius of our T, and I'm going to swing it from this this new 90 that I've created. While I'm here, I'm going to divide it. Remember, with T development, it's important. We, we never divide the pipe itself. You see, I've, I've swung these arcs. I didn't divide them. Okay, I've just left them the way they are, and that's the, that's the same with all T development. And let's take this same, arc, uh, the same radius here and swing it. Okay. So now I've just, I've just shifted that profile a little bit. And what I want to do is bring in the profile points into my new arc, my large arc of the, of the cone here. And then where they hit this arc, they come down. And that's where, again, it becomes similar to our T development in, from previous years. Where it hits the pipe, or cone in this case, is where, where it projects. So I'll bring those over. And then straight down. And same here, we'll bring these over. So now that gets me three points down below, three points up tall. And now I want to connect those points up. I want to connect those points and that's what's going to give me the uh, corresponding points to finish my miter line off. So the outside to the outside, the middle to the middle, and the inside line to the inside line. So we get three lines running down there. But these ones, these ones aren't parallel because it's a cone. They they change slightly because this arc is different from this one. It's got a taper on it just like that cone does. But that's what we need. Our, our lines of our, of our item we're developing, which is the T, are all parallel. And that's where our, remember where our parallel line comes from. Now this one, you go ahead and label it if you want. Uh, our 1 to 7 here, and then we would have, uh, you know, 4 to 7 here, and, and, and uh, 4 to 1 here. And we could correspond all those, but we're, we're, sometimes the labeling just gets in the way. It just makes things a little harder. And I find in this case that's one of them. So I, I, I'm, not, I'm leaving off the label in here um, because it, it follows a simple pattern. And the simple pattern is we're, we're starting on the outsides, of course. And then we're going to move up one over one or down one over one. And we'll move here, we'll move here, or to the outside, and then make our way back in. And then now there's our miter line developed. And that, that's really the tricky part of parallel line. Once we have that, we're going to take this now into a stretch out. Okay, so, so that's our elevation view development. And that gets us ready to create our pattern. So I'm going to get my, uh, my shop drawing off the board here. And I'm going to draw my stretch out. Okay, so there's our stretch out drawn, uh, four times pi, and then I've divided that into 12 equal spaces. 
You now, a couple of things here. Uh, typically, when we're doing parallel line, we, we talk and use projection. And we're projecting our pattern into the stretch element. Now, we could do that in this case, and we can in, in all parallel line. It's a matter of if it's convenient or worthwhile to do so. And when we do projection, our, our, um, our element lines need to stay in the same direction. So you see, in my elevation view, my element lines are horizontal. And I've drawn my element lines and my stretch out um, vertical now. So it's not going to work because they're not orientated together. So that means I would need my stretch out orientated up here or down below here to be able to project into it. And you imagine doing that in the shop, it's just not practical. So a lot of cases, and I, it's what I prefer, especially doing these in the shop, is to not project, but to pick up your lengths with your dividers and, and transfer them across, okay? So that's the way I'm gonna do it. Now, we get back, remember I said I didn't bother labeling this. I didn't want to, in this case, to develop this, this miter line in the elevation view. But to create the pattern, I do, because I want to be able to track where I'm going here. I also want to be able to track where my seam is, if I want to truly put my seam on the short side. So I'm going to label it, um, I'm going to start here at one, two, five, six, just to seven. That's all I need. Now, the short side is going to be the bottom here, the larger uh, part of the cone. So I want to put my seam at point one and then head around. And once I've picked that, that's all I need the labeling for it. I don't need it for anything else. It does come in handy because we're not projecting. Um, we're going to transfer, so I, at least I know which line is what. But it's not essential. It, it just keeps track of things a little more here. Okay, so let me grab my, my dividers. And again, um, we could measure here to find a height of our blank. Uh, if I'm in the shop, I'm probably just going to cut something a little bit big. I'm going to grab one of these longer lines and, and ballpark it a little bit. It doesn't work the way it used to where we add our seam height plus half the uh, cone because it's, that's different, right? The, the cone is in a consistent size. So anyhow, we grab uh, one of our element lines, number one, and I tick that off. And I'm going to do both number ones. Then I pick up two. Now notice, notice that there was one here that I picked up. And we're picking up two. We're not including the profile, remember. The profile is not part of the element lines. The element lines are what make the pattern. And a profile is never included in that, as far as the length of the element line. There's two. Take three next. There we go. Three, and three, four, to four, five, to five, Six. And seven. Okay, there's our pattern. Uh, of course, we'd add on any seams and allowances we require here now. Usually, uh, we're going to do something to join it, a lap seam. Could be a, a butt weld, though and then any sort of dovetail connection that we're going to have there. So again, you're using a flexible curve. I don't have one, but we're looking for a smooth Now that's pretty lumpy bumpy, uh, but that's just my pen work. Okay. Uh, tea on a cone. Thanks.